Hello all. I uh, hope you're having a good day. Hope you're staying positive. Hope you're balancing out your world uh, and understanding of how and the what is going on. Uh, thank you for taking the time to come live onto these calls because, as you all know, I believe in energy and I believe that when a collective moment happens, and this is a collective moment where people are live together, there's just something stronger about that than listening to it later on. I don't know what it is. That's just my understanding, which is why, you know, people get very moved when all of a sudden at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock, everybody in a country claps together to thank our frontliners. There's something moving about it because the energy is moving at that time. So, uh, you know, thanks for coming on and uh, allowing me to feel your energy and hopefully you can feel my energy and that this energy then goes out uh, to as many people in the world that need it. As you know, um, I'm one of those teachers that sort of has been knocking around for the past uh, 25 or 30 years. And I've never really had a big following. You know, as I jokingly said, Asha, Jesus only had 12 followers. At least I have one more than that. <laughs> so <laughs> I never really had. And, and I think the reason why that is, is, is a quite a simple reason. It's because I tell the truth. I don't try to butter things up. I don't try to make it all airy, fairy and flowery. I don't say everything is going to be all right if it's not going to be all right. I like to give a balanced view and open opinion with an open mind, open heart. And as I say, I will only ever share stuff that I've gone through myself, which is why, you know, on some topics I just won't speak because I haven't had the experience and I don't want to just regurgitate other people's opinions, thoughts or crap. It's if if I listen to something and it's new and it has a, a, a resonance for me, well then I sit with it, I contemplate and I meditate, which is what I'm going to uh, talk about and help explain today. So I'm going to talk about stuff today that, strangely enough, would probably make more people run away from me than ever be attracted to me. And, and it's, that must just must be me karma in this lifetime or something because, you know, as I say, I like to, I, I like to balance the truth because there's only one truth and it has no opposite. Everything is true to a certain extent, but truth is it. There is no higher than that, which is why when I wrote my first full book, I called it More Truth Would Set You Free, because I realized that this was a, a marathon rather than a sprint or a, you know, that the truth is just too big. It's a mystery, and I didn't really want to get that deep into the mystery. So one step at a time, it became more truth. I found more truth, and that brought me into a, a much more deep uh, experience. And those deep experiences have helped me to become the person I am. And, I, I, you know, when I look at everything that's going on, I look at everything that's going on. I don't look at just one side of it, because it's no good, you know, putting your head in the sand if... if a storm is coming, it might be better to get in behind a rock, <laughs> you know? But if your head is in the sand, you might be covered in sand and die. I hope that makes sense to people. And I'm sure it'll make sense to the people who have had the courage and strength to stay with me for all the years that they have, because I'm a bit of a tree shaker, you know? And the reason I, I like to... Uh, shake trees is because I just got to that stage which I hope more and more people will get to quite soon when this is all 
blown over where they just don't want to spend their time anymore with bullshit. You know, with power struggles and who's right and who's wrong and who cares, you know. And who cares how much money somebody has that they doesn't have? God bless them. Because we really should be getting to that stage now where it's all, you know, more about uh, having the ability to just watch in, in as much silence as possible as to what's going on in order to help yourself uh, through this journey. And as I say, you can begin to do that in a way that helps to balance things and helps us to get prepared. So today's conversation, I suppose, that we're going to have is based on, on, on two statements that I break down. The first statement is what I call the three awakenings. And the other is what I call the circle. So what do I mean by the three awakenings? Well, it's a bit like what's going on. If you got caught up in the hustle and bustle of life, you might not wait or being awake as well as other people. So the three awakenings are a bit like wakening up in the morning. There is a natural way to waken up. That's where you just, you know, open your eyes slowly. You know, you feel rested. You get out of bed and it's all very natural and it's all very slow and it's all very beautiful. Then comes the next type of awakening that's where you set your alarm and the alarm wakes you up and you wake up in a bit of a you know type of and, and reaching and slapping the phone or the alarm or whatever it is and then there's the you're late you didn't even hear the alarm and so now you've missed something or you're going to rush and in that rush, you're going to fall, you're going to make mistakes, whatever it is. So it's not a great metaphor, really, for what's going on now. You know, like, what, what is going on now and who, who prepared for this? Let me give you a bit of a laugh because I'm... <laughs> no, that's a genuine laugh. Like, <laughs> I want to give you a laugh. Over the last week or so, it specifically, I've never had as many people ring me who had large amounts of money asking me, what should I invest it in, Derek? As if I was some sort of Wall Street broker or something. You know, what should I invest my money in? I don't know what's going to happen and diddly do. <laughs> and I just, like, Obviously, I can't giggle into their face, even though at times I want to giggle into their face. But, but you know, I have a professional reserve about me that doesn't allow me to laugh too much into their face. But anyway, I had the exact, like, I, I'm not, I'd say I had, honestly, I'm going to say four calls, but it might have been seven. And I had the exact same answer for each and every one of them, except for, one person who emailed me and I had a different answer for that person. But the answer that I had for the phone call people was, oh, it's, it's really easy. Come here. There's only one thing that's secure now. I said, like, you know, I, I've checked out Wall Street. I've checked out the Aztec and the Nasdaq and the, you know, whatever. <laughs> and this is it. Invest in consciousness. And there's, there is that moment of silence on the phone, you know. I hope that they're all laughing at the thought of this. You know, because these are very wealthy people, some of them. You know, like they're all worried, sick, you know. And I'm going, yeah, consciousness. And I'm going, oh, by the way, I haven't heard from you in three years. How have you been? Have, you know, have you been listening to my calls? Oh, are you doing calls? <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah. Invest in consciousness. In other words, your money is going to go. You can't bring it with you. 
now that you're in a panic, you realise, oh God, when I was talking to that guy, he talked a little bit of sense. You know, whatever. So, here's what I'm saying. Invest in consciousness. Because it's the only investment that's giving a good return now. Unless, of course, you want to invest in entertainment. Because as part of this balanced experience I'm talking about, I think somebody shared with me recently a piece of information that was just not shocking to me, but just left me going, oh God, no, not again. Oh God, please don't let us lose what we're gaining in this tragedy in these sad crisis times. And it is that the sale of online gaming is gone up by 4,700 and something percent. Oh, Lord. That indicates that people are not even capable of spending quiet time when they've been given the opportunity to have some quiet time. So these are the people who are obviously not investing in consciousness, but are investing in something that is not real, is going to collapse, and will never make them happy. That is the ultimate truth. And it's up to us, as I say, to hit and find out, well, which of those awakenings are we in? Was it a natural awakening? For me, this was a natural awakening. I'm sorry if I offend people now that I woke up naturally. Well, I woke up naturally because I spend a lot of my time trying to be conscious. Conscious of as much as I can. I am not perfect. I don't want to be perfect. Please don't send perfection towards me. God, goddesses, or non-God, leave me alone. I'll take responsibility for my own actions. Thank you. Now, so what do I mean by the natural awakening? Well, natural men, when I wrote the book Stop the Struggle in 2012 that I haven't published yet <laughs> because I was waiting, uh, might be time soon. But in that book, as a lot of you know, I wrote When the World Economy Collapses and It Will, and I Basically, and I'm not one of these people jumping on the whole bandwagon of I predicted this coming and whatever and so on and I'm some sort of Notre Dame as a, or Edgar Casey or whatever. No, I'm saying that in the natural cycle, everything is a circle. A moment ago, you heard me speak about circles. So what does a circle look like? Well, the first thing to understand is humanity doesn't change quickly. It might momentarily change, but it won't be able to hold that consciousness. So it will revert back quite quickly. If it's natural, well, then it's more of a slower type of event, like watching jelly or gelatin set you know takes time and the reason for it to take that time is because it goes in circles everything that's happening now has happened in the past and will happen again in the future and here's the interesting thing you don't even have to be the brightest bulb in the packet to understand that what I'm about to say to you now is spirituality 101. If people are woo-woo-wooing with this spirituality stuff, run them away from them. They're not grounded and they're not in a good space. If you have somebody who is just left brain Facts, 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 run away from them. They're not having a happy life. Look for the Buddha. Why do I say the Buddha? Because the Buddha said in his teachings, it's about the middle way. 
It's about finding that middle way. So how do I know, or how did I know, or how could you know when the next event is going to come? In other words, how can you predict the future? You might go, oh, that's all woo-woo stuff. Oh, that, that's woo-woo. Ah, Derek, look, nobody can produce, you know, I've heard of psychics, you know, and I'm jokingly, when, especially when I'm walking through the likes of Los Angeles and you see some, you know, psychic with a sign on the window saying, closed, you know. <laughs> and I jokingly always, always, it's just my sense of humor. I always go, I wonder, did they see that coming? You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and how come none of them ever won the lotto? Like, I, I mean, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to lighten something that I believe God gave us a, a app, access to a brain, and that we have to use that brain as part of the holistic element of who we are, not the whole who we are part of it so if you have the ability to use your brain you should so here's a cycle i'd like you to think about please if you would and i'm going to tell you as as i've openly told people and especially the new people who are listening to this i have had very little technical schooling in my life as a child But as soon as I became an adult, I got very interested in education. Not education, education. So interested because I had a natural ability to be a great healer, a great therapist. And so I returned myself to myself and went to school as an adult and I trained in disciplines called psychotherapy, hypnotherapy, neuro-linguistic programming, uh, you know, et cetera, so on and so forth. Okay. That's part of my circle because I needed some grounded information to back up experiences that I was having that nobody was able to answer for me. I seem to have the ability to know stuff that I shouldn't really know about, but I did. And I realized when I graduated nearly at the top of my class that, oh my God, look at that. I have got the ability to learn if I want to. But if I don't want to, I won't. So the next time we're pushing our children out to school who just don't have it, we might actually begin to consider ways of encouraging them to be more about who they are, centering themselves, and let the circle of life bring them to their own perfection, to their own self. So let me give you a circle. And then... You can go, oh, look at that. The guy also knows how to use mathematics. Because here's a circle for you. 1918. Spanish flu. 1980. HIV AIDS. 2003. SARS. 2009. Swine flu. 2014, Ebola. 2020, Corona. When you have time to listen to this recording again, you might begin to realize something very strange. And here's what that is. There seems to be, on average, every six years, three, 2003 to 2009, is six years, 2009 to 2014, six years. Every six years, we seem to be hit with a new virus. What is that? What's going on? That's called a circle. Now, 
everybody's talking about climate change and is there climate change and what is climate change and for years I've been telling people there is a natural climate change that should happen a natural climate change what we have done with our greed with our stupidity with our ignorance is we have speeded everything up the reason we have a coronavirus that was followed or you know we've had SARS, and Ebola, Corona why did that happen? I'll tell you what because we're cutting into the forest and in the forest are these animals who have been carrying these diseases in their natural system it doesn't kill them they're just carriers of it the exact same way as some people are carriers of this corona and because we put in now we're paying the price so facts are facts people if you have common sense you begin to see how our actions are creating reactions cause and effect we spoke about it in previous calls but here's another coincidence of a circle every time there seems to be an outbreak of some sort of health issue it comes with an economic issue 1772 the credit crisis 1935 the Great Depression 1973 the opal oil crisis 1997 the Asian crisis 2008 the financial crisis and 2020 the corona crisis or whatever they're going to call it again look at us it's another circle the great thing about this is it shows that this too will pass but the question that has to lie on people who are investing in consciousness is this how can we help to slow down the suffering how can we help how can we serve ourselves our family our community our country our world our cosmos how can we do it by slowing things down not by creating a 4700 percent increase in gaming online crap it's about contemplation and meditation and there's a huge difference between contemplation and meditation I've often said and again this is why people a lot of people don't come to me I say it again and again one of the most dangerous things you can do is meditate why because if you were truly meditating and believe me I've met my dark night of the soul if you are truly meditating you meet the dark night of the soul that's why if you're lucky if you're blessed if you're great enough to have a physical teacher who knows what they're doing to help you you will become deeply happy deeply moved into grace if you have the grace to have one of these teachers this is why they created monasteries did you know that and nunneries or convents whatever you want to call them they created those buildings because when people chose to leave the crap of materialistic life behind them and go for the goal of going to find out who they are what God is or whatever they went into deep crisis and in that deep crisis they would be put into a cell and nurtured and looked after by the chief abbot guru teacher or whoever whatever title you wish to give them if you ever heard of a saint called padre pio you can be there's a pure 
example of somebody who went for the dark night of the soul, so much so that he ended up with stigmata on his body because his conscience dropped to such a manifested state of the fight of good and evil that it affected his body physically. So meditation is a very dangerous thing. Now, I hope he's out now and they're going to run away from the meditation classes. Just go in and go, you know what? It's not meditation, this is contemplation. If meditation happens, you probably won't know it till it's too late and somebody has to hold you down or whatever it is. But in general, contemplation is really good because if you contemplate, where are you at? When you're looking at people, where are they at? Have they woke up naturally or have they just woke up now with the alarm going off? In other words, did they hear the alarm going off in, you know, November and December? Because I certainly did. I certainly felt it happening then, naturally. Because all as I kept hearing about, because I had ears to hear, I wasn't just out trying to make money or drinking myself into oblivion or eating myself into oblivion. I was listening. I was feeling. I was experiencing. And all I could hear people saying, even before that actually, but definitely around then, was, I have this flu. I've had to take an antibiotics. I've had to take an all. I just can't shake it. Well, if you haven't figured out by now, that the coronavirus or whatever it is has been around longer than it was detected, you might have missed something. I'm aware of people who are carrying it in January and I had to help them with energy because I was praying because I seen what they had but they didn't know and I just held them in grace. Because if I didn't, I believe they could have went into crisis. And that's when they were sitting physically with me. And I couldn't tell them because that's not what they were ready for then. They had to contemplate. They did. And they got through. And so, here, this is the circle of life. There comes a time when you know, the tables turn, and the tables have turned now. In other words, no matter how wealthy you are, how important you thought you were, whatever, this virus doesn't hold. It's coming. If you haven't got consciousness, you haven't got peace, and you haven't got love, it's coming. It might only touch you, or it might complete your karma, which is a good thing, and take you home to your creator. And that, too, is part of our journey. I, I, I'm amazed how many people have sent me pure mulligans, muck, crap, you know, links to this and links to that. I got a link recently of somebody who was saying, oh, the whole world's internet was going to be cut off uh, for uh, three days, four days, whatever it was. And guess what? After it was, uh, everybody, no phones, no internet, no nothing. And then when it all came back up again, they were going to arrest, uh, have arrested hundreds of thousands of people uh, for doing bad things. Well, maybe I've been asleep, but I haven't seen it. Or maybe I'm not meant to see it. Or maybe it has happened. Or maybe we need to stop and start just creating proper foundational teaching foundational teaching have you ever seen a house being built by putting up the roof first and then the walls and then the foundation no so let's let's keep it basic people let's look at the facts that will help us to understand that humanity has cycles of doing things. And this is one of our greatest opportunities, if we can take it, in the crisis that is all around us. How do you know a good teacher? A good teacher 
sits there while crisis is going on and just keeps talking about the teachings. This is what you need to do. This is as simple as it is. This too will pass. This is part of a cycle. Here's the information. And what it does is, as I say, it turns the table. And how does it turn the table? Well, I can tell you that I haven't got a single phone call from all the hundreds of thousands of people that I have helped to feed and this group SQ Worldwide has helped to feed for years in a panic. Because they're so used to only having a bowl of rice and a few vegetables, in some cases once every three days. That does nothing that new in this for them. It's us, us, the Westerners, lazy. We've become lazy. We've become fat. We've become overfed. We've become, you know, unhealthy. Our minds are unhealthy. Let me give you a true story. This is an absolute true story. This sums up what I'm trying to say about if we don't put a ceiling on our desires, everybody listening to this call, if you don't put a ceiling on your desires, the economical fallout of this that is going to happen is going to destroy you. It's that simple. But you don't need to go there. All you need to do, invest in consciousness, invest in your health, and invest in wellness, and let everything else look after itself. Here's a true story. In Gujarat, in India, you might remember the earthquake that killed a phenomenal amount of people. Well, you know, the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, tells a great story of when that happened, The Satya Sai Baba organization was one of the greatest organizations to come forward to really help people on the ground, help them with food, medicine, and water. Practical stuff, you see? Practical stuff. He said, but the world also helped. And he said he was very grateful for their help too. But he went on to tell this story that was very enlightening. There was a story of a group of psychologists who came because they said, the poor people of India, their mind will be wrecked. They'll be mentally disturbed. They won't be well because of the trauma that they experienced. And when that group of NGOs specifically for to help with that particular thing came over, they all left within a couple of weeks. And they left because they couldn't really find anybody who had huge mental trauma. Imagine that. It's a true story, people. And they didn't have the trauma because their piece of plastic with some sticks that used to be their home was still there. They just had to go through the rubble to pick it up again and start all over again. Their bags of rice were still there in the sacks. And yet, we know that the next crisis of this virus is going to be the mental fallout for Western people. Because they have forgotten God. They have forgotten spirit. They have forgotten cooperation. They have forgotten how life is to be made as simple as possible. That does not mean that you can't have the best. It's not being attached to it is the secret. The eye through the camel, or the camel through the eye of the needle, that story that Jesus tells, right? Of you cannot, you know, enter the serve two masters, money and God. You one or the other, like a camel going through the eye of a needle. What they didn't explain further about that story, which I remind you of again, is the camel could go through the eye of the needle if it let its hump go, and its hump 
metaphorically represented our attachments to materialistic wealth. So the camel could go through if, if you're willing to do that. So in Gujarat, they left because they couldn't see, they couldn't find enough people traumatized. I think that is absolutely incredible. One of the things that we have to experience in this cycle is grief. So if you're feeling grief, if you've been touched personally by this, which I know a lot of you have, it's okay to grieve. You, you know, spirituality isn't this sort of big band-aid that makes everything okay. It's not. The balanced version of this is if you've lost a loved one, it's okay to cry. I cry with you. It's okay to go through the different grief versions, the five steps of grief as it's called. Don't bottle it up. Don't try to go, oh, I'm, I'm, look at me. I'm, some people, and it's, I'm amazed, the amount of FQ people who are sitting with very little fear. A matter of fact, some of them have been emailing me going, they feel guilty that they feel good at this time. And I go, don't feel guilty about that. That was your investment in your classes, in your consciousness. Now, this is the bank account that you're feeding from. So don't feel bad. It is what it is. When I've asked people recently, if you still want prayers, protection, whatever, whatever, give me, you know, send me an a, a, a email. I, I, I wasn't doing that, you know, for, for some ego gratification or something. I was doing it because I'm now identifying people who are just lazy, who have set and just absorbed all the teachings and all the gifts and all the miracles and all the wonderment and give nothing or very little back in return. They couldn't even take two minutes out of their time. Like I have had thousands of students over the years, okay? They couldn't take two minutes out of their time to send me an email. And what I was more interested in, what was the hopes? Because if I knew what the hope was, I knew what their dream was. If I knew what their dream was, I knew what teaching to give them to manifest their dreams. Because dreams are only dreams until they're manifested. So I'll wrap this up before I keep going on and go on to the questions that people have. But it's time now, you know, that we understood and understand that governments are here to serve us, yet they seem to be just serving themselves. We need to turn this around by taking it back, taking back our power and our enlightened selves. Now is the time, people. Now is the time to take back your own power. Freedom of speech is a great thing, but only if what is being said is the truth, not the sort of crap that's going on online. People being able to make any type of allegation against anybody or any organization with no proof to back it up. No. They're, those, they're, no. Now it's time for us. Now it's time for us to shine, for us to come alive, for us to go, my investment is now paying dividends. So here's the questions that have come in for today. Hi, Derek. Uh, Hi, Derek. Forgiveness exercise brought me back to love immediately. Thank you for sharing this with us all. Again, people... That is a very powerful exercise. I put a longer version up on YouTube. Send it to your friends because if you think for a moment that there's one being on this planet that doesn't need to do forgiveness for themselves or others, you're delusional. Send it to them. Get them working on it. It'll help them in the long run. Would it be a good idea to physically clap when we notice that we are acting or being a victim? Or acting out any other negative emotion? Good question. Would you suggest any other physical emotion to get back to the feeling of love? You've just answered your own question, and it's a great question. Yes. If you feel that you're going down a certain path, and you're within that path, you are finding 
you're, you're, you're getting dragged into a deep, click your fingers, clap your hands, you know, do something, get out of it, move on and get back to love. Absolutely. In NLP, they call it anchoring, anchoring it all in. Next question. Uh, Hi there, just wanted to say how much I appreciate these calls and our blessings. I would like to stay on the blessing. Oh, yeah, you're on it. Uh, I'm going to call you by your first name. Kathleen, you're, you're, you're on my list. As, as are even some of the people who haven't bothered reaching out to me. I'm kind of hoping that somebody, you know, says to them, have you been listening to the teachings or have you just been sort of worrying about, you know, whether you're going to die or whether it's the end of the world? Um, hello Derek. I don't like to think about people dying alone, but it is happening so many, if not most people, with the virus, whether they are dying at home or in hospital. I'm wondering if you can talk about the spiritual and emotional aspects of this. Um, great question again. I haven't much time to go into it, but I have did teachings on the Bardo. These are the teachings that come from the monks who have studied the death and dying process. Within it, there is one thing that is supposed to be one of the highest deaths possible. And that is, uh, in, in Tibet, they say that the body should not be physically touched for three days prior to them dying. So... The fact of the matter is, I think a lot of people who are going on to these incubators or whatever are actually, and please forgive me if I'm wrong with this, this is my gut feeling, this is my, it doesn't have to be your belief, it's my belief, okay? I watched Linda do this, so I, I know she used it as an exercise, okay? She went on the incubator for three days, the life support for three days, and then she clicked out. I was there for the third day, tapped her on the crown chakra, and out she shot everybody happy. What's going on now is I believe that the souls who are being called home now to help us from the other side may be using those days to quieten their space to prepare them to go to the highest realms later on. That's what I think. Uh, I hope that was helpful information in some way. Uh, Happy Easter. Uh, where we go? Hello, Derek. You are addressing... Uh, thank you for addressing my previous question. My next question pertains to this time of introspection and great potential for transformation. And there is confusion about manifestation. I live in the United States of America where much needs to be realigned to make more functional... Okay. I got your question. I, I'm going to answer this question with a truism or a truth, okay? Again, we're talking about these circles, okay, and about things going around. All right. So, during the Spanish flu, okay, there was a war going on in Europe. These are facts now, people, okay? You can check them out for them yourselves. You see, I'm not that intelligent. I never declared myself intelligent. I'm, I'm very wise, not that much intelligent. But I love when I get these, this information that helps me to put my intelligence to the wisdom level and the wisdom level to enlightenment. But what happened was this. During those times, the reason why more and more people died then, I think there was up between 30 and 50 million people died with the Spanish flu. We had a war going on. There was a situation in America where the president of America, back then in the flu, you can check this out, don't take my word for it, right? Uh, he ordered soldiers onto these large boats to go and fight the war in Europe. And even though he knew that they had the potential of spreading this flu to each other, this is where the coffin ships came from. That saying of the co co coffin ships sounds like coughing, doesn't it? But coffin ships okay and so what happened is they spread it all over the place so it's fascinating to now watch that the countries who left it too late to act stopped people being in congregations they are now paying a bigger price they're now saying that and god bless us all that the United States of America will probably end up with the biggest death rate in the world. 
that after in 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 the America in Europe, uh, England will probably be. And yet, the two leaders of those countries are the two leaders that, in their wisdom, they decided, ah, sure, it's all grand. It'll be gone in a few weeks, and ah, sure, we'll do the herd mentality. Well, that's what happened in the Spanish flu. When the president was told by his medical team, don't put people that close on boats together or they will die, he didn't listen to the medical. He listened to the warmonger in general who said to him, but we need the men to fight. Now, if they had any sense at that time, they would have known that people who already had the virus already had built up the immune system for it and they were the ones that if we really wanted to send people to die either of the virus or by stupidity of war at least they would have been the people to send so when these people make big decisions like this out of some form of i don't know what except i'm going to call it a three letter word e g and o I think the poor people pay for stupid decisions, which is why I do hope that when this all blows over, that we look at our leaders and say, we put you in there to serve us, not yourself. You haven't done a great job. Get the fuck out. Yes, I did say that word. Get the fuck out, because we need to get people in there who would know what to do for the upliftment of humanity at this time. So, that's my opinion. I'm entitled to it, somebody once told me. Freedom of speech, somebody once told me. And it's the truth. My truth, anyway. I have been learn, leaning into the teachings and support from you and the group in SQ Worldwide and can now bring my mind into a calm place. Uh, thank you so much for the teaching, teaching, being fully present in the world at this time. Why this is going through this, lending your support and love. My question is, okay. Is contemplating our own death a worthy daily practice so as to reduce the fear associated with death and dying? Yeah, look, it's the same question. I feel as if I would have to let go of hundreds of attachments long before I ever felt ready to let go of my last breath. Is there any kind of practice you know of that helps release attachments? Yes. Simplest one is service to others. Second, breathing consciously. Third, anything that you cannot control, you shouldn't be attached to. Ah, contemplate that one. Anything you cannot control, you shouldn't be attached to. I like that. I'll leave you with that one. Next question. Can you talk about how can we still be present in a conversation with a dear friend and witness their suffering and hearing their cry for help and still not listening to your calls, which I know will alleviate their suffering? Well, thank you for knowing that. How long is enough? and balancing with compassion and detachment. And the witnessing and knowing of their pain sometimes get mixed up on my own witnessing until I get centered again. I am doing the bubble every day and other in any other insights would be highly appreciated. Again, you can bring a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. You can send people links to stuff that would be really helpful for them but you know what if they just don't get it they don't get it it's the teaching of ice cream flavors as many paths are many destination is one ice cream is ice cream but there are many flavors not all flavors are liked by all people what i would say and i've always said this and i will repeat it again and again you stay calm You stay in love. You apply the teachings and they may just spot what you have and then look into that package. But if you're running around trying to help people who don't want to be helped, you're going to look crazy. 
if you're screaming at them going, why don't you do something, you're going to look crazy. And did I mention you're going to look crazy? Okay. So, don't try to change anybody. Change yourself constantly. That way people may see you for who you are and be grateful to what you sit in contemplation and meditation. Next and last question. You must have given up on questions because there was only a few this time. First of all, I'd like to say thank you, thank you for sharing your wisdom and love. You are welcome, whoever. This is all I took birth for, I believe. Here's my question. How can I stop desiring and at the same time still keep on going to manifest what I truly want to experience in my life. In my case, a fulfilled relationship. And how can I deal with ongoing experiences of abandonment, even if I know that I am the creator of this, and also know my inner belief system that keeps attacking the situation and my life? Well, Let me read something that I think uh, might be very helpful for you at this stage. Again, it's from my notes from way back in the day. And I'm sure you've heard it before, but it's always nice to be reminded of these great things. The author was Nadine Stair, an 85-year-old Louisville, Kentucky. And the name of it, and I'm sure you've heard it before, but it's nice. So take a moment now to quieten down as we end this call with this reading. Take a deep breath in. Exhale out. I know I sometimes rush through the questions, but that's only because I'm trying to get as much tools out to people as I can. But the real me is the one sitting here right here and right now. After centering myself and forgiving myself for rushing through. If I had my life to live over, I'd like to make more mistakes next time. I'd relax. I would lighten up. I would be sillier than I have been on this trip. I would take fewer things seriously. I would take more chances. I would climb more mountains and swim more rivers. I would eat more fruits and less beans. (laughs) I would perhaps have more actual troubles, but I'd have fewer imaginary ones. You see, I am one of those people who live sensibly and sanely hour after hour, day after day. Oh, I've had my moments. And if I had to do it over again, I'd have more of them. In fact, I try to have nothing else, just moments, one after another. Instead of living so many years ahead of each day, I've been one of those people who never goes anywhere without a thermometer or hot water bottle, a raincoat and a parachute. If I had to do it again, I would travel lighter than I have. If I had my life to live over, I would start barefoot earlier in the spring and stay that way later in the fall. I would go to more dances. I would ride more merry-go-rounds. I would pick more daisies. There's somebody who hit the wisdom at age 85. Goes to show you Enlightenment can happen in a moment. 
everything that has brought you to this moment is now your greatest gift. As the song goes from Mr. Cohen, it says, don't worry about the cracks in you. That's how light gets in. Don't worry about the cracks in you. That's how light gets in. So every experience you've had is valid, my friends, my fellow travelers, through this game of life. Each and every one of you is authentic in your own right. Each and every one of you have a lesson to teach in your own right. Each and every one of you have a voice to be heard. But when you're using the voice, don't waste words unless they're in service to humanity of which you are a part. May you all stay safe in the hands of divinity. May the divine hand only close around you when it is your time to go. And may we have the wisdom for a nano moment when that hand closes around the loved one. Not to cry in pain, but smile in grace, knowing that the Creator is calling back some parts of itself to itself. Because the Creator once separated itself from itself so it could love itself more. Now it is calling those parts back to itself to create a whole new world, a whole new creation, a whole new game. Enjoy the rest of the week. Be in peace, be in love, be the light you are. God bless you all, and I hope when this is all over, as I say, that I get to hug each and every one of you physically, because the value of that hug has just gone up by thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars than it ever was valued before this current set of circle of life events. Enjoy your week and I'll uh, talk to you all again for our last interaction over the phone like this on Thursday before I go to a new platform which is doing meditations, contemplations and uploading stuff onto my YouTube channel for to help you during this time and all your time on this planet. God bless and talk to you all Thursday. Bye bye. Slan August Bannock in Irish.